yeah uh-huh. No way we're from that jungle, uh-huh Know what we do is the grandma, uh-huh Know what we into that pizza, uh-huh That pizza, uh-huh, yeah, yeah uh-huh. No way we're from that jungle, uh-huh Know what we do is the grandma, uh-huh Know what we into that pizza, uh-huh That pizza, uh-huh, yeah Welcome back to Truth Be Told. My name is AJ. I'm your host. Um, in the spirit of Men's Mental Health Week, this week I've got with me Drew Reynolds. Um, Drew's going to tell us all about his story about his highs and lows, um, you know, everything that he's experienced with mental health, you know, getting through it. Um, yeah. I hate intros, man. This, this, the intros are not my thing. No. Nah. nah, fuck. I, I cannot stand them. I, can, I cannot fucking. They do my head in. So tell me, Drew, man. Welcome, firstly. Thanks for having me on the show, bro. Man, it's been ever since you supported me with everything that was going on in Brunet Barbie and you have my back. Fuck, I had to get you on. Especially, I don't think we planned it, but man, it falling on Men's Mental Health Week. Yeah, perfect. it sort of um, aligned with you know, the right week to get on here, so it was good, man. Perfect timing. All right, so let's, let's get started. Um, Take me back to the beginning, man. Take me from when you were a kid, where you grew up, how you grew up, you know. And yeah, so I, um, I grew up on the streets of Belmore. You know, um, it's pretty rough back then in the area. You know, I, you know, I was with my mum and dad, and my brother Josh. Um, my parents separated when I was a young, young guy. Took that, you know, took it very hard. You know, I've seen a lot of stuff as a young kid that, you know, someone my age maybe should not have seen. But, you know, we move on, you know, um, my mum, she was a big, big rock in my my brother's and my life, you know, she um, bent over back for us, you know, she worked big hours just to, you know, put us through good schools and make sure we had everything, you know what I mean? Um, you know, my dad was there, only sort of had an arm's length relationship with him at the moment, but, you know, he had his issues growing up as a young fella. But, yeah, I had a good, good upbringing, but, um, yeah... A lot of things, bro, that sort of spiralled after that stuff, you know. Where'd you go? To, where'd you go to school? So as a young young fella, I went to Clempton Park Public School. Mm. So it's in like the Clempton Park old area. I was a very very troubled kid growing <laughs> up, you know, always in trouble, detentions. Even started before that, bro. You know, my mum. Every time she come to daycare, there was a new story. You know, what Drew did today? Oh, he punched the kid or threw sand at him. Oh. Or, Definitely would have wanted to hang out with you in a Nah, I was cooked, school. bro. I was cooked. But um, yeah, then um, high school, um, my brother went to Cogamaris. Mate, what a school. Hey, shout out Cogamaris. Yeah, you went there too, didn't you? Mate, very, I definitely got a very, very good education there. Oh. Fuck, I'm giving my 30 grand back. Oh, far out. Yeah, so me and my brother went there. You know, we played sport and um, footy was our, you know, go-to thing. We played for St George Dragons all our life. You know, I started at four, played up towards about 16 and then I just, my life just went downhill from there. So Tell me about it. So what happened, what happened at 16? How good were you? I was a good player, bro. Like, you know, a lot of people say I was better than my brother growing up. That's a big, that's, that's a big nah, call. He'll tell you, bro. We've had some big backyard, um, big backyard games, a few brawls. But no, nah, it's... Um, how do I say it? I um, didn't have the t- determination like my brother did. Mm. I had the passion, but because Josh plays for the Tigers, yeah, yeah, he plays for the Tigers. He's um, had a big career with the Bulldogs. Now he's with the Tigers. So yeah, it was um, he's done well for himself. But yeah, at the age of sixteen, bro, I um, you know wanted to you know do the wrong thing, wanted to hang out with the wrong people. Take shortcuts. So yeah. What made you? What, what? What do you think that you went down that way, and your brother went down the other way? At that age, like, well, what's the age difference between you and Josh? Uh three years. Oh, so you're still pretty close. Pretty close, yeah. It was pretty much just you know I was just a troubled kid, bro. You know I um always got um how do I say it misinterpreted. Mm. No, I was always an angry kid, always getting in trouble. Yeah, I just, I got picked on young, you know, from just being naughty, 
you know, it wasn't picked on because, you know, there was something wrong with me or I was bullied. Just I was always that naughty kid, you know. But I wanted to play football. It was my dream from a young age, you know. I loved football. But, um, yeah, I just... Were you playing at, what, 16? So what's that? SG ball? No, I never played any of that, bro. I played, you know, all the... Um, what is it? Club? Club football. You know, we won probably five, six grand finals. Fuck. So, yeah. And then so from, from there, now you, you wouldn't believe it, but I got scouted once to play professional. Did ya? Nah, fucking useless, bro. I've never, play, I've never played a team sport in my life. Would have been goalkeeper for Elwood Wanderers, wouldn't it have been? <laughs> <laughs> actually, I played, I played indoor soccer once and my mum was actually the coach of the team. That's the only reason I got a trophy. It's all right, bro. That's all right. That was an honest pick. I'm a, I, I'm a, I, I pride myself on being a professional spectator. Yeah? I'm a very, very good spectator. So a bit of a scouter. But, uh, yeah, fuck, bad. Tell me about 16. So when did you start? When did you, how did you, like, were you partying? With, like, 16, you know, so was I it was, women? No, nah, it was more I was hanging out with older older crews, you know, in their 20s, 19, 18. You know, they were dibbling and dabbling in the drugs, you know, cocaine, marijuana. Um, so I sort of had that addictive personality, you know, and when I first tried my... Um, First tried marijuana. I liked it a bit, but it wasn't my thing. But as mm. soon as one of the boys um, gave me a line of cocaine, my whole life changed from there, bro. How old were you? Yeah, about 16, yeah. Very young. Fuck. And just what, from there? Just from there, bro. I, do you remember that exact moment? Yeah, I do, actually. It was, um, I wouldn't say, it, it was a good feeling. But what it's caused, the pain it's caused myself, my family, my friends, it wasn't worth it, you know. Mm. So, yeah. Um, fuck. So, 16, obviously you still at school or no? Nah? You got expelled, didn't you? Got expelled, yeah. At the end of year, mid year 11, I got expelled. That's about 16, 17. Yep. Expelled from school. Didn't have no TAFE course behind me, no nothing. So I was sort of just, yeah, just let out to sort of. Making money. Making money, that's right. So were you were you making money to like support yourself or support like, what would you classify your way of making money? Like the thing was, bro, like we had like, my mum was a battler, you know, she made yeah. sure we had everything. But, you know, we... We didn't have much money, you know, we didn't have many things. So, you know, it was a hard life, but we didn't go without. So I had this sort of obsession in my head that, you know, I I don't want to live like that. Mm. But then again, you know, I wasn't doing the right things to get to where I wanted in life. You know, I, you know, just doing the wrong things like crime, started off small, you know, shoplifting, from factories, um, then it got into the bigger things like drugs, dealing drugs. Um, then it got over to like you know collecting debts, violence. You know I was in trouble at the age of seventeen. Had a very bad charge with um at a house house party and had a fight out the front. The guy got really badly injured, and you know that turned my life around. That's where it started from there. Just. Yeah, big dramas, you know. I I really needed serious help from that age, you know. I knew something wasn't right, but I just, um, yeah, shortcuts, bro. It's all it comes down to. And like, how old were you when like? So that was your, so you caught you copped your first case at sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen, yeah. Wow, what was that? What was that feeling like? Had you, was, was there a lot of pressure on you guys? Um, like, what was that feeling like? For you. It was hard, bro, because, you know, I've, I've never been in that environment, you know. I got arrested by police. Um, me and my mum had to go down to Bankstown Police Station. You know, I was interrogated there. You know, my mum didn't know what was going on. And, you know, it was, it was pretty tough, bro, you know. Did you stay like, overnight? Nah. They it's fucking scary. They let me go after four hours, so I was pretty lucky. But I, you know, I was a young guy. I had no idea about all this stuff, you know, but... The ego, the big word, the ego. Mm. It's um, it's a big bad word that one. But I got through, you know. I had to. Um, what did I get? I um, 
they were bad charges, but I got ended up getting section ten. Nah, three hundred. I pled guilty, and then I um I think I got three hundred hours community service. So what's what do they do? What do they make you do for community service? <sighs> community service, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. You see, you see a lot of stuff on there too, you know. you got a lot of the older blokes doing it with you. But it's just more giving back to the community, you know, mm. like cleaning graffiti off walls, you know, doing a bit of maintenance around parks and it's just giving back really. Basically, you know, a Same. little council worker. What is it, four or five hours a day? Or No, nah, I used to work. I used to do it on a Saturday because I had sort of school but it would be an eight-hour day, bro. Fucking hell. So for eight hours, 300 hours. So, My math's it, disgusting. It so that's me, about a whole year. Yeah, it took year and me, a half. Yeah, nearly two years to complete it. Fucking hell. And you didn't, you, you weren't like, okay, nah, fuck this. I don't want to do this again. You can't, bro. It's the law. What are you going to do? Can't pull a sicky. No, I'm saying, like, as in, like, you didn't think, like, okay, you know, the punishment, you're like, oh, fuck, I, I'm not going to fuck around again. I did, bro, but, you know, not going to lie, I, I met a few guys. During community service, that gave me some more brighter ideas. I was, about, <laughs> I was literally about to say, they reckon they reckon there's there's two there's two ways to go into jail, like going to jail or going to community service, anything like that. There's one where you come out and you come out reformed and a good prisoner, yeah. and then there's another one where you come out a better prisoner because it's like it's like a training ground. That's true, bro. But um, more towards the addiction side, like an addiction. Mm. You know, I um a cocaine addiction. You know, I was never proud of it. How often would you do it? I was doing it weekly, bro, you know, daily sometimes. But Fuck. it was all to suppress my feelings, what I've been through. You know, I um I couldn't cope well. I had a lot of head noise, you know, so I, it was to suppress that. But, um, you know, it's, it, it's not a path you want to go down. You know, I've got a lot of mates, a lot of families struggling with addiction at the moment. That's a horrible thing. Um, you know, I went through it. It um, took me a lot of guts and courage to admit that I needed help. You know, I I just kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. But, you know, there's, lo- there's no life in it, um, AJ. You know, you, you get nothing good out of it. You know, you cause pain for your family, you cause pain for yourself. You get health issues, you get yourself in trouble. You might even, you know, let yourself behind bars. But... um. It's just a horrible, horrible disease, bro. All addiction, eh? Not just drugs. Yeah, every addiction. You know, I had a gambling problem as well. You know, I um, gambled a lot. But yeah, it's just it's it's very sad, bro. There's a lot of people suffering at the moment. You know, they lose they lose everything. You know, from um, you know something that they can't control. What do you like? Ex- I get it. Like I, I, I can understand. I've got as funny as it is. I've got an addictive personality. Yeah. Like I get really, but because I've acknowledged that, I stay away from things that sort of because it's in the bloodline. It's in the of bloodline. Course. My grandfather, my grandfather has got it. It's so like for me, it's just like I know I've got it, but I just I mellow out. I don't like. I just I know what I've got to do and not do, and, and also if like I'm straying, but um, what would you like? So for example, like you, like you said, you knew you, knew you had. Things wrong with you, demons and stuff. Like, what would I, what would you tell yourself when you're partying? When you're like, because look, bro, it was it was more of a thing to escape reality. Mm. Don't get me wrong, I liked it, but towards the end, I didn't like it, bro. You know, I was just doing it to cope with life. Do you think it became a habit? Of course, it did. You know, I wasn't. You didn't know any better. I was eh? an addict. I didn't know any better. You know, it was it was very sad. You know, I just yeah lost. Lost the world to live, bro. Ever have suicidal thoughts? I did, bro. For a long, long time, I had that bad a head noise. So, as I was trying to suppress my feelings with drugs prior, mm. you know, just kept digging the hole bigger and bigger. You know, the problem me using wasn't going to make those bigger problems go away. Mm. So I was just digging my grave, digging my grave. And I did, bro. I had big, big, big mental health issues. Um, was this before or after jail? Um, so this was after jail, bro. I um, sort of had a lot of remorse about stuff I've done to people, uh, remorse what I've put my family through. Mm. You know, it, was, it was on um, 
you know, in the papers, front page of the papers, it was on the news, you know, and my mother didn't raise me like that, AJ, you know, mm. like she's like a straighty 180, you know, I don't even think she's, she doesn't hardly drink, I don't even think she tried a cigarette or even got a speeding ticket, mm. you know, so it was hard to see her go through that, you know, it was very hard. I know, like, yeah. How um, how old how old were you when you went in? Twenty one. Are oh, you went in at twenty one? Yeah, I was young, bro. Wow, very young. But um, yeah, I was dealing drugs. You know, living the high life, party life, gambling, hotels, escorts, traveling. Cause, Cause you're up late hours as well. Yeah, well. That's that's the thing, bro. You don't live a normal life when you're doing no. that sort of stuff. Like, you think not having any sleep, constantly looking over your shoulder, mm. worrying about tomorrow, worrying about yesterday. Like, it's just unhealthy, bro. You know what I mean? But yeah, I um got caught with a couple of mates doing the wrong thing. You know, we had a bit of a syndicate gone, and um, coppers were watching us for nearly twelve months. So wow. my whole world went down. Um, when I got pinched, you you told me about that story. How you um you were in where, where were you? Yeah, I was so. And your I, brother? Did your brother find you or no? No, no. What happened was it panned out. Um, I was in the entrance fishing with a few of my mates, mm. and I got a private phone call saying, "Oh, there's this is Detective So and So. There's a warrant out for your arrest." I thought it was one of the boys, you know, playing a bit of a prank on me, and I said, "Ah, oh, fuck off," and I hung up the phone. Come back to Sydney the next day and, and, you know, at my local cafe in Belmore. And I'm sitting at a table with a few friends of mine, two girls and one of the boys, I think. Not going to mention names, but um, something didn't seem right that day. Mm. Like I was just looking around and it's like a very dark, gloomy day and, you know, it, it just didn't seem right. Mm. You know, I was looking at those suspicious cars and I don't know, it just, yeah, it didn't look right. Anyway, so I've sort of got up. Try to, you know, sort of go through the kitchen, gone out the back lane of Belmore and then three cars have just hit me. They've said get on the ground, so forth, how you get arrested. And then what was really sad, um, you know, I, was, I have a lot of, you know, guilt and shame. Um, my brother's team was walking down for lunch and they all see me on the ground, you know, with detectives and all that. So it was, it was very hard, bro, you know, it just it destroyed me as a man. You know, how'd your family cope with it when you got arrested? Because that was a, it was all over the papers as well. Yeah, well, it was all over the news and the papers and stuff like that. But you know, you think about it, every mother, every father is going to struggle when they know you know there's either their son or their daughters behind bars. You know, it's it's, mm. it's not an easy thing. But yeah, you know, my family struggled a lot, bro. But more, I struggled more. You know. But what was your headspace when you got arrested? What was like? What was going on with you? Like, what was like going through your head at that time? It was bizarre. I didn't. I was even living in this reality, fucking delusional world that I didn't even have that in my head that I was going to get caught. So it was a big shock to me. You know, like I actually went. That's like, ha- that's like everyone. <laughs> that's no, like everyone. Like I was looking behind, like me or. You know what I mean? Like mm. it was, it was pretty he's in, bizarre. He's inside. He's inside. Yeah. Me. Nah, I wish, bro. But yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy stuff. And you got locked. How long did you? How long did you go in for? Oh, I don't need to disclose that, bro. Mm. But it was a short time. You know, I seen a lot of the stuff in there. Witnessed a lot of stuff that, you know, a lot of people don't have to, you know, really see in their lives. You know, I um inside I seen a guy get. You know, I was having a shower. See the guy get stabbed like 26 times right beside me, you know. It was pretty wow. crazy. You see that stuff in movies but you don't really see it in real life, you know. And even like the drug use in there. Like so that was going to be my next question. Were you still using in there? I wasn't using in there, no. Nah. But it is a big, big, you know, a lot of boys that have been in jail or, you know, a lot of families that visit their, you know, people in jail. There's a lot of drugs in jail, bro. What is it, what's it called? Um, Bupe? Yeah. Well, What's bube? Ice, isn't it? No, it's bube. It's a big epidemic in there at the moment. It's a, it's sort of like heroin, bro, but 
It's very bad. You know, you think people go in there into jail to, you know, sort of rehabilitate. What's the word? Rehabilitate. Yeah. But they just get worse in there, bro. You know, it's just it's shocking. It's a lot of corruption going on in there. Any crazy stories? Any crazy lessons? What What did you learn while you were in there? Were you like, did you have any revelations? Did you have like, I had a friend who was in there. He was telling me he read um the forty eight the this book, the forty eight laws of power. He he reckons he read it like six times. Listen, I've done a lot of a lot of thinking in there. Mm. You know, like, is this really for me? It wasn't. I'll tell you straight. I hated jail. Didn't like it. it wasn't mm. for me. Another thing was, you always think about your court case. What you're going to say, what's happening, what evidence, blah, blah, blah. But another thing, you have a lot of downtime to think about what way do you want to take in life? You know, mm. do you want to take that way or that way? Or do you want to be in four wars like we are now? I didn't want that, you know. It's putrid. Jail isn't a good place for anyone. You know, it doesn't make you tough to go to jail. doesn't make you bigger, better than someone because you've been in jail. I'm embarrassed that I went there. Mm. You know, it doesn't make you, you know, some big head honcho because you've been in jail, you know. If anything, you got caught, so you're a dope. Mm. <laughs> that's what that, yeah. That's what, that, that's what freaks me out. They, everyone, they go crazy about, you know, going in, going in. But isn't the whole thing if you're a good criminal, you don't get caught? Well, I definitely wasn't a good criminal, bro, because <laughs> I got caught. But you're right, you know <laughs> what, what I mean? mean? There's a lot of, you know, it all depends. But, yeah, just so Yeah, a lot of downtime thinking, huh? A lot of downtime thinking, you know. The old, I think it was uh, lock-in on Tuesdays, you know, you'd get locked in your cell at three in the afternoon mm. and you wouldn't get out to Thursday, eight o'clock in the morning. Were you in a cell by yourself or did you have a celly? No, I was, I had I had a few cellies, a few crazy ones, a few dramas with some of them, but I was in a one-out for a long time at Silverwater, but... um. You know. Would you rather a celly or rather a one out? It depends, bro. It all depends. I like the one out was good because you you know, you keep your own yourself company, you watch your own T V show, mm. you don't have to worry about who's watching what. Oh, do you have TV? I didn't know there's TVs yeah, in Yeah, bro, there's T V. Mate, what T V show are you watching? Uh Home and Away was a good one. <laughs> Seven o'clock every night. It's like it's really bizarre, bro. Like, you know the time slots for each Mm. You know, you got that much to, time to think, you know, when everything's going to be on and stuff like that. But, um, yeah. So what was it like coming out? What was it like when you got released? Were you like, it's going to change now, this is different? Because you, you, said, you said earlier that your mental health got worse. It after. got worse when I was in there, yeah. So a lot of the stuff I've seen, bro, and, you know, like I said, a lot of the remorse, it didn't play good in my head. You know, I had mm. a lot of head noise, bro, so much head noise. It wasn't funny. What's it like? I know I know what head noise is, but, like, explain like explain what you mean by head noise. So my my um, definition of head noise would be, you know, it's, it's mental health, but, you know, I wasn't hearing voices, but it was just a very, very dark, shady place mm. where nothing... Nothing in my head was good. Nothing yeah. was positive. You know, I was getting thoughts of, you know, how I should kill myself, what right. I should do, how should I tell my parents this. Just so much chaos going up there. It's just, it's hard to get out, bro, you know. Very, very hard to get out. Do you feel as well, I think, because you stopped as well, your body... Did you ever have like a chemical reaction to stopping all the drugs um, while you're in there? Because like going cold turkey, I know that that's the like that's the issue for a lot of people. Do you reckon that played a bit on it as well? Um, would have played a big role, bro. You know, I did have withdrawals when I was in there. I'm not gonna lie, but it was more I had to deal with reality. Yeah, you know the problems that everyday people deal with without suppressing it. Without suppressing it with something. Mm. And that was the biggest, hardest thing in my life, bro. Very, very hard. I struggled big time. Very, very tough. Hey, Amen, but you got through it. I That's did, bro. That's why you're here because if, if you didn't get through it, you wouldn't be, able to, you wouldn't be here. It's if you true. didn't get through it, you know, someone, someone can look at this and be like, fuck, you know, they could be going through it. They could be on their way to a bender right now and they're like, oh, quickly check in. Like, nah, that's not the way to go. 
No, that's right, bro. You know, like like I said earlier, there's a lot of my friends and family that have gone through it. Mm. Um, it's a big ego thing, especially in my area. You know, a lot of the boys, they don't want to ask for help. You know, they think it's a sign of weakness to ask for help. It's not. It's a sign of strength. If, 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 you ask, if you're my opinion, like personally, I've been to a psychologist. I've been to all that. So have I, bro. I've been to all of them. Mm. Rehabs, private ones. Um, I've been to Concord for a night. I've been a psychologist. I've been a psychiatrist, you know, like I've had a lot of mental health help. But like I said, um, drugs, aren't, drugs aren't good, you know. There's a lot of people that are stereotyped and how do I say it? Um, what's the word? Influenced into it at a young age. Yeah, yeah. They feel if they don't use with these people, then they're going to be looked different. If they don't do this, you know, they're not going to have friends. Drugs aren't good, bro. You know, I've, almost, I've nearly overdosed twice in my life due to drugs. You know, it's just, it's just a horrible, horrible, it's just a, you know, a horrible, vicious cycle. You know, it's, you know, some people, they can have a bit of a dabble but then go to work on a Monday. I couldn't do that, bro. Mm. I went for that three day, four day, that week. You know, I, I had to admit defeat that I had an addiction and I had the willpower that I wanted to get through it because I didn't want to put myself through it anymore. I've had enough. Mm. What took you to, what, what, what do you reckon took you to that? Like when, when you admitted yourself, like when do you like, when was that, when was that moment where you're like, nah, f- no more, no more. That's it, that's it. Well, come to a time and place, AJ, that I um, I start to use on my own, mm. and I that's, wasn't. That's that's when you know, that's when you know. And I wasn't liking it. I wasn't enjoying it. I was just doing it for the sake of it. So I knew, you know, this is problems. You know, I've got big problems. So when I spoke to my mum, my brother, my dad, you know, my auntie and cousins, it's, it's sort of an intervention, and I broke down. You know, I, I said I need help. I've got big problems, you know, gambling, drugs, women, etc. You know. I still have women problems. Do you? Yeah. They're my boys. No, I'm joking. That's your problem? Yeah. That, don't you think women are everyone's problem? <laughs> I was, I was, I'm not being sexist, <laughs> but they do. They have caused a lot of trouble in my life. Uh, that's just realised. I just realised of late too. Oh, my God. Anyway, back, back. Yeah, so I admitted defeat, you know, I um, I checked myself into a place called South Pacific Private, so it's a rehab in Curl Curl out in the Northern Beaches. I went in there for addiction but also depression and anxiety. Mm. That was the biggest, wow, I was actually worse than jail, bro. Yeah? Oh. Was it, aren't they supposed to be nice? They're nice but they're very confronting. You know, you got other people in their patients. We're all struggling, but it's very confronting. You know, in that place, there was no phones, no TV. You had all these. There goes home and away. <laughs> exactly. They had all these programs that you had to do. Um, there was no sugar. No, it was just crazy, bro. No caffeine, no soft drink. It was just full down pat, like army styles. How long were you there for? Six weeks. So I stayed there overnight for six weeks. So, yeah, we basically done programs, you know, addiction programs, depression. Do they know. make you train? Like what do they mean? Yeah, you can how train. Do they, how you do can, they fill up your day? Well, it's like it's like, actually like uni, bro. You know, you you got a module and you got to go to classes, meditation. You go for a walk along the beach. That's, so you know, they're, they're top – the top therapist in Australia, so they know mm. what they're doing. But um, that place saved my life, bro. I'm not going to lie to you, it saved my life. Was it, was it a particular experience in there where you're like, like a groundbreaking nah, thing? So, or? so with me, bro, um, with these like psychologists and all these type of people, I, I find it hard to connect with them if they haven't been through a similar situation. Mm. You know, you can go to uni for 10 years or whatever they go through, but... If they haven't been through addiction or PTSD or anxiety or depression, how can you sort of relate to them? Mm. But there was this guy in there, his name was Luke. 
he was a very he was a top guy. You know, he, he come he went through gangs, he went through addiction, he was you know adopted young, all that type of stuff. Mm. So I really really um, adapted with him. You know, you're telling me something when we had um, breakfast the other day. He said something to you that resonated with you. Was it Luke? Yeah, Luke. Yeah, what did he say? Um, so this is the thing that always, always sticks in my head. Mm. It's never left me. He said to me, Drew, I've spoken to your parents. You've written on the – I've looked at all your files, all your reports. He goes, you know how you're living? There's only three ways out of this. One – is institutions. You're in here now. Mm. Two is jail. You've already been there. Three is death. He said, keep that third one in your mind because that's the way you're heading. Actually said, that's the way you're fucking heading. And that night when I went to bed, something <laughs> switched in my head. I don't know what it was. So that freaks me out. Like, that's crazy for a psychologist. Uh, was he a psychologist? Yeah, he was a head. He was a head. Um, Head psychologist. That's crazy for a psychologist to say because normally they try to stick away from that topic. Do you know what I mean? When it comes to like death and suicide and stuff like that. It was true, bro. You know? Yeah, I know. It's sometimes the realest things that hit you the, hit you the best. I'm a type of guy I don't like hearing the truth. You know? No one does. I actually do. Truth to be told. You know what I mean? <laughs> Plug. But um, it saved me that place. It saved me. How many stints did you do there? So in my time up till now, 20 out, I've done three stints in rehab. Or six, six, week, uh, six week stretches? Yeah, between four to six. You know, I'm going to be honest, bro. The first two I went to was for my family. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to pack it up. I didn't want to pack Just up the party life. Keep it quiet. Keep it quiet. You know, all right, mum, all right, Josh, dad, nan, whoever was wanting me to go, mm. I'll go. Bit of a holiday for me, get away for a bit. But I didn't want to do it myself. Until someone wants to change, I believe. 100%. They won't change, bro. doesn't matter if you God can, comes down. You need to want to change. Mm, 100 You can't. You can lead a horse to water. Can't make a drink, brother. Yeah, 1,000%. 1, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000%. That's probably one of the biggest, yeah. But you can, you can give everyone all the fact. Like, look. They teach us in school, they say this is the right way to go down, blah, blah, this and that. Unless you choose to phys- – everything in life is about choices. Choose to do this, choose to do that. Everything lead- – all choices have consequences as well. That's a big thing in my life, bro, that I didn't take serious. You know, I – you know, about the crime and making money and doing all this, the good things, I never thought of the consequence mm. of what could happen if things went wrong. So we don't think about when things go wrong. You know, you're getting money, you're doing this, you're getting high, girls. You don't think about the other side of the fence, bro. Mm. That's been a big problem in my life, but I'm working on it today. That's good. That's good. So how long ago was rehab? Were your good stint, the, like the final one? The final one, that was in 217, I think, yeah. What are we in now, 2022 years ago? Fuck. Mm. And um. What do you reckon you've learned in that time? Because I know you're very vocal about mental health. I know you're very... I'm big on it, bro. Yeah. Massive on it. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people are struggling out there. You know, they don't know how to ask for help. You know, they think they're a burden on someone because they're asking for help or, mm. you know, they just don't have the help, maybe the financial or stuff like that. But um, you just got to be honest with yourself, you know, you're struggling or you can't get up for work or you know you've got a lot of head noise or suicidal thoughts speak to the speak to your loved ones you know speak to your, your best friend speak to your teacher at school you know there's help out there it's not weak to speak anymore like now i think now you know i think I, I, men have the i think men has the men have the highest rate of suicide and you know, it's it is, bro. We've got the highest rate. It's 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 fucked up. Um, you know, because you can't like you you the, the crazy thing is you can't you don't understand people. It's a fucking 
you dangle it. Ah, I hate. Ah, oh, fuck. I'm just, I'm just being me. Thing is with suicide, what people don't realize, um, this is, this is gonna be a very tough one. The thing about the, the thing about suicide, what people don't realize, is that it's an actual ripple effect. Correct. Um, again, the the crazy the craziest thing about it is, you know, you you don't understand the darkness of what that person's going through. It's sort of a it's a double ended sword. Do they end their life and it creates a ripple effect for everyone else, or do they, you know? Not, not sort of like, not go down that path, but they're still dealing with all their stuff that they're dealing with. Do you know what I mean? And nah, look, I um, it's a crazy. It's I know a, what you're talking about, bro. You know, like it's a rippling effect. You know, I've had suicides in my family. You know, it's been a big thing in my family, and um, it's sad, bro. Very, very sad. You know, especially you know young, you know school kids taking their life due to bullying and yeah. stuff like that. It, uh, oh, but no. anybody, I'm gonna say it's great. Anybody that calls someone a coward because they take their life is wrong. You, you're not, not a coward because you don't know what that person you, you don't know what that person's going through. Look, it's against my religion to do that, to take your own life. But then again, you don't know what that person's going through. Re- look, religion aside, religion aside, at the end of the day, not like I think that the power of the human spirit is phenomenal. Like it, it is, is phenomenal. Like there has been people that have overcome odds that a lot of people who, you know, didn't think they could have. If that makes sense. Like a, a lot, a lot of people have overcome odds that to the average person are like, "What the fuck?" No. Suicide, suicide is not. The, suicide is not the way to go because you know, at the end of the day, I feel like my 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 big my biggest thing is that like. You know, your story, like by you becoming a survivor, your story can save another five people. So you're re- re- you're, you're actually reversing the ripple effect. Correct. Like I said, again, um, I was in that spot in my life mm. for a long period of time. You know, I, I didn't want to be here. Every day was a struggle, bro. Mm. You know, I opened my eyes. I didn't want to be here. You know, I used to cry, cry myself to sleep. You know, I, I I just it was a very very dark place, bro. And I couldn't get out. Didn't know how to get out. But me being in my room, sleeping all day, you know, taking drugs isn't gonna wasn't the answer. You know, people don't realize you got, you actually have to take action. You have as to. Hard, as because I know, like, I got diagnosed with depression. Yeah, I still suffer it today, bro. Um. I got I got diagnosed with it. But my my one thing was, I would I would argue constantly with my old lady, and I'd be like, I'm not taking pills. That's yeah. that's just that's me personally. Look, a lot of people are against taking medication because my view. I think I'm very into the you know I got the sage, I got all that. Like I'm very yeah. into the the holy. Like, I believe in the power of the mind. Like the mind is the most powerful thing. So like my thing is like if I don't I don't need a chemical thing to sort of. Get me over it. I understand that some people do need to take that. And I, Look, I respect them that they have to do that. Yeah, of course, bro. Like I'm, I take medication, mm. you know. Am I going to take it forever? I don't think so. But how do I say it? There's, a, there's people that will take medication and there's people that won't. Mm. But, you know, I'm not on big doses. I used to be. But I try and do the things like, you know, I go and play tennis with my mate, gym, get out, meditation. Do you meditate? Yeah, I love meditation, bro. Yeah, I love meditation too. Yeah? But I can't do the – I'm very fussy. Like I'm very fidgety. So what app do you use, Calm? No, nah, I don't use that. I do. I go on the high frequ- – I go on this thing um, – I go on YouTube and look up high-frequency videos. Yeah. And I just lie down. And I just breathe in and out for about 30 minutes. Well, you know, insane. someone that suffers anxiety or depression, mm. believe it or not, because, it's, you know, you think it's not connected to your brain, but breathing is the most important thing. Oh, yeah. You know, when you breathe in through your nose, go straight to your brain. <laughs> Correct. And if one, you know, a perfect se- exercise that I used to do was just concentrate on yourself breathing. Mm. And it's like that anxiousness and anxiety sort of went away for a bit, you know. It's a hard thing, bro. You know, it's everyone's, it's a very big epidemic in Australia, not only Australia, but the world. And they, I think they just need to start doing more resources with it, you know, start off at, 
schools, primary schools. Oh, if it was up to me, if it was up to me, that I would change the whole curriculum of schools. Oh. Let's start with meditation. Let's start with. Um, you can't really teach anti-bullying. I th- I think. I don't think you can teach that. You know, people. You're always gonna have that one fuck weird kid. It's. I think it's just a common part of society. I would teach. I would get them to teach skills that allows people to realize that that anyone that tries to put it on another person is actually it's a reflection of them. Correct. I think that's one of the biggest. I think that's one of the biggest lessons that people learn. I try to teach my brothers as well because I yeah. see my little brothers. Well, well, I'm not gonna lie, bro. I've probably done some stuff like that at school. Me too, man. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not perfect. Me either, bro. But you learn from it. Yeah, you know, that's what know. I mean. Like it, honestly, anyone who I, I did put it on, or if they feel like I bullied them at school, I apologize. Straight out, I, I can, and you can message me privately, and I'm more than happy to call you and give you a phone apology. Me too, Drew Reynolds. Anyone that I've you know, bullied or gave a hard time in school or, you know, recently or whenever. My apologies. You're happy to contact me via phone or Instagram. Happy to have a chat. 100. Because at the end of the day, look, but again, you know, it's how it's how we grow as men. Not like saying that bullying is weight, but you, you got to. You learn, bro. Yeah, you learn. And the, like we're talking about in the car, the best way, the best way to acknowledge the shit is just like own it. Just, own it. Just own it. I mean, I had a, actually, I had a, I had a guy message me the other day. I couldn't stand him in school. Like we, me and him, we will put it on each other. I could not stand. I'd bully him. He'd bully me. Anyway, I like. I think he messaged me or I messaged him. But I like, he he started a business and I liked it. I'm like, give fuck it. You know what? Eight years down the track, gives like, do your thing, man. Like, good on you. And then we we'll message and we're like, we'll, in that message is like, so powerful because we we'll just pushing each other up. My bro, if this was in school, we would not be like this. We would be tearing each other apart. But, you know, like, it's not worth it, man. Like, At a young age, you're vulnerable, bro. You look I, up to the big boys. I agree, but I just, I just think, I don't know. Like, think about it, right? I've just never been that. I just, I've never, I, I've, I've grew up with older people. I just, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I fucking, man, like, if. I 100% believe in a one-on-one, 1,000%. A one-on-one, too, on have a crack, have a crack. If you've got an issue, have a crack, have a fucking go. Well, but the- don't use, don't use weapons, don't, don't use knives, don't, don't use batons, don't use guns. If you lose, own it like a fucking man, cop it. If you built someone, the person you built, put your hand out, lift them up, say thank you. You gotta, you gotta remember as well. A lot of, a lot of, the, a lot of these kids these days. There was a video that went viral on Facebook about um, there was a black guy. There was two black kids fighting, and he, and then he walked over to him. He was like, a whole bunch of kids surrounding him. He was like, you, 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 all of yous on your cameras, you know, yous are making it worse. Yeah, seen that. The thing is, we're in that we're in a social media society that we're like things like that. How many, how many got arrested? One died, six got arrested. That's again. That's not. It's not suicide, but that's a ripple effect. Not only did the guy whose family who, who passed away rest in peace, not only is his family affected by ripple effect, these six kids now will get five, six years. They'll come out of jail. Listen, I'll tell you one thing, brother. That I learned. You know, it's all good being gangster and thinking you're tough and this and that. But at the bottom line, you know, you doing all this stuff. Isn't going to make you a bigger man, a bigger person. You know, a lot of these kids look up to these rappers. These big rappers wouldn't want these kids to do that. No. You know, don't get me no wrong. Way. Don't get me wrong. You know, there's always violence, guns, this, that. But at the end of the day, bro, just write your music, write stuff that you, it means stuff to you in there and produce it. You know, all this stuff. A lot of them are rapping but. In fairness, a lot of them are rapping from personal experience. And that's and what, good. And, and, and they don't, this is what young kids got to realise too. For them to rap about it, for them to rap about it, they're using their life experience. Not saying that you, you, you don't need that sort of, you don't need, a, you don't need, a, you don't need that life experience to be a somebody in life. You know, I've hung around with a lot of these rappers. A lot of them are all gentlemen. You know, I've got, I got time for all of them, especially a lot of them in the Sydney scene. 
every one of them if I have a conversation with them and said, I sat them down here and I said, listen, let's, let's talk about knife violence. Every single one of them will look down that camera's eye and they'll be like, it's not worth it. They all rap from experience. But the whole reason that they rap is to take, this is what people don't get it. The whole reason why they rap is to remove themselves from those environments. 100%. A lot of, a lot of like, especially in America as well, a lot of rappers, you know, they all did what they had to do, but they don't want to do that, you know. A lot of them had no choice, bro. Exactly. You know, see how my, my uh, what I've done to suppress my mood and emotions and head noise was drugs. Mm. A lot of young kids turned to rapping, which is good, you know, but violence, crime, it's not good. It's always going to be around there, but it's, it's definitely not the road you want to go. No. Like a 16-year-old just got his life taken away. His parents have to deal with that. The guy that done it. He's probably going to do murder. Six of them. Six of them. Is Even it, that, like that's just is fucking it really weak, worth it? Man. That's just, that's just, that's just fucking weak. It's weak. It's weak as piss, bro. What happened? You know, it's a big saying, AJ. I've always lived by it. The loudest one in the room is the weakest. Don't say that because I'm pretty. Loud. No, no, I'm talking about the camera <laughs> guy. <laughs> I'm pretty loud. You know what I mean? But yeah, no, nah, yeah. No, nah, you know I mean? a thousand, a thousand, a thousand percent. There's, yeah, man. The, the stats. <laughs> oh, fucking kid, bro. That's what burns me. He's like, he's a baby. He hasn't even lived, he hasn't experienced the. He's still in school, bro. Still in school, doesn't, hasn't experienced life, hasn't traveled. Where all these kids, man, uh, I told off a kid once. I was in the studio once and he had a knife and I'm like, what are you doing, man? That's, it's not gonna, that you're, you've been given that item there, they don't realise the the power of, of life and death until something happens. Someone close to them dies. Like I've had close friends to me die. I've had close friends to me OD. I've had, you know, like it's just like they don't, they don't, they don't get the significance and the power of life and death and it. Well, the thing is, bro, you um, – once you pull that trigger or make that wrong decision – Even one punch, Or me. blade someone or those one punches, you can't take it back, bro. Nah. You know, nah. so, you know, life's a sca- – I tell everyone this, life's very scary. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's around the corner. You know, that kid went to school in the morning and yeah. look what's happened. Crazy. That's what I mean, like, that's... Thanks, bro, I need it. I'm going to get rid of this fucking negative energy, man. What the hell is this like? If you are listening to this, straight up, if you are listening to this and you listen to, and you listen to all the music and you listen to all that stuff, let me, let me tell you a couple of things. I'll school you in life. My cameraman's going to tell me, oh, brother, fucking keep touching this mic. I can tell his face is cracking the shit. Let me, let me tell you a couple of things if... If you are listening to this, let me let me give you some game. One, don't carry a knife. Don't carry it. You're in Australia, firstly. You're not in the ghetto. You're not in the thing. You can say that I'm not from the ghetto. doesn't matter. I've been to rough neighbourhoods. You don't need a knife. Knife's not going to make a difference. Learn to politic. That's, that's my a couple big tips of advice. Learn to politic. Learn how to talk. Learn how to, learn how to use your, your words to... Get you out of situations before you have to throw a single punch or f- before you have to defend yourself. That's the first tip of advice. Second, a blade, a blade will never do anything for you. At the end of the day, I'm never gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna get involved in adult business. I'm not gonna get involved in 20 plus business because that's not my business. I don't really care about that. But if you're a young kid and you're 18 years old, 18 and under, and you're carrying a knife and all that thing, man, it's not worth it, lad. It is not worth it. Do not do it. Do not take it. It's not cool. The big boys don't think it's cool. The big gangsters don't think it's cool. It's not worth it, man. You're gonna throw your life. You're gonna throw your life away for nothing. You're gonna destroy someone else's life. Think about your mum. Think about your dad. Think about your brothers. Think about your siblings. Think about your friends. No one's gonna come visit you either. They'll come for a couple of days, a couple of weeks. They'll come. And then they're going to slowly fade because their life, they're going to get girlfriends. They're going to get boyfriends. They're going to go through things in life. They're going to they're completely forget about you. 
Then you're just going to be that one mate that's in jail. And then you come out and you have to restart and you don't know what to do. Then you go inside as well and you're not treated like, it's not like going to school and they, they bully differently in there. They actually will stab you. So if you're a young kid and you're watching this, there is more to life. There is more things to do, you know. Would you rather be a gangster in the street or would you rather like educate yourself, learn, learn how to do things, learn how to do skills, travel the world? But don't do it, man. Be creative with it. That's, that's my little thing, but yeah. You know. I'm going to elaborate on what you said, bro. Like at the end of the day, you know, I was young, you know, we all want to be, I wanted to mm. be a gangster. You want to make money. You want to, if rapping was your thing, you, you wanted all that. You know, you wanted the cars, mm. you wanted this. But at the end of the day, you know, being a gangster in my eyes now, being the age I am. It's taking care of your family. I was just about to say that. Uh, gentleman, respected, mm. a family man, a good father, if you're blessed with kids, like you said, travel the world, do all that stuff. You go behind bars, your whole world comes down. You destroy your family. You destroy yourself. Say you're doing a big whack in there. There's no TAFE courses, no uni courses, no nothing. A lot of people get on the drugs in there that were never on drugs. Their life's doomed. You see a lot of stuff in there that will fuck you up. You might die in there. There's a lot of stuff that happens in jail. Trying to be a gangster, bro, is not the way to go, you know. Be a rapper Try and influence people. If, say you're old in your teens or whatever, influence the young generation, you know. Make them want to be be like you, you know. Don't make them want to be like you, carrying a blade around, stabbing people. It's not cool. So I hope whoever's watching this gets a bit from AJ and me. And you know what, man, to, to the six... To the six young kids, like, you're 16 too, man. I can't, I can't like... Man, I can sit here and go off and be like, what the fuck and this and that. But, like, you're 16 years old too. You you barely have matured. You barely have developed. And, you know, you might be looking and listening to things where you're like, yeah, fuck, you know, they do this, they do this. We'll ride on our enemies. We'll ride on our ops and stuff like that. But just remember a lot of your favourite rappers, they have lived it, but they're rapping to get out. And I'm not saying you have to do, you have to be, I speak about it in my interview with Rick. I'm not saying that you have to be a rapper to get out. Learn a skill. I've, I don't know, I don't have fucking, I can't rap. I'm not athletic at all. I mean, I've got hands, but I'm not athletic. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a good writer. I'm good with my words. I found my talent young. I found my talent now, but I, Find what you're good at. Find your talent, and hone in on hone in on that. You know, at the end at the end of the day, like you gotta you gotta remember something. Like your life life is long, but your actions can make it very short. You now, would you rather live a good, fulfilled life and, and do everything you want you see on Instagram, go to all drive all the fun, fun cars and drive all that stuff, or would you rather live a short life, man? It's it's fucking in like that. I I, don't, I can't even string my sentences together because. I don't know. It's, it's fucking I think the biggest the the biggest thing in our community in the world that causes the biggest dramas are these things here. Oh, yeah. These things are fucking poison, bro. Because they want to people people record. Like I've been guilty of it. I've been at a. At we a, all have, a, bro. We were at a school fight, and you want to record it. Hundred percent. You want to be the first one, like and Nokia seventy two ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had the boost ones. Ugh. I thought I was cool because I had the boost flip, but like flip. Yeah, no. Nah. Look, my thing in, I reckon, you know, do something you love doing. Do it for you. Don't do it for anyone else. You know, you don't have to mm. sort of, you know, a lot of my life growing up, I worried about what others thought. Mm. But where did it get me? Nowhere, bro. I'm still learning. Do your own thing. Follow your dreams. Yeah, don't yeah. let anyone get in, in front of that. Whether it's your mum, your dad, your brother, your school teacher, your girlfriend. Follow your dreams. Do what you love doing because... You only get one chance, true? Uh, Look at that 16-year-old kid. You know, he's dead. He probably had all these dreams, bro. I want to leave this planet knowing that I gave 
life a good crack, you know. Imagine me and you, we get to 60 years old. You can't go back and change things. No, you can't regret nothing either. You don't. My biggest thing, my biggest thing is like, and I'm guilty of it because I, I would always say, look, I want to go as hard as I can, and if I die young, I die young. But as long as I gave it a crack, <laughs> I swear to God, like I'm, I'm guilty of it. Like, I actually, I had, I had a girl pull me up about it the other, the other week. She's like, "Fucking, you got to stop talking about death. You're gonna manifest it." My, 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 th- my thing is, is like, I've accepted mortality. Because I've realised that, you know what, the sooner you accept that death is coming, the more authentic and real you can live your life. You know yourself, bro. What's the only thing you're guaranteed in life? Death. What else are you guaranteed? Nothing. I was going to say something stupid, but I'll, you know. It's true, bro, you know. What would you – How? Like, there's one question I want to ask. How do you do – how How do, like, now that you – now that, you know, you, you've sorted yourself out, you know, you're on the path and you're doing well. Things that pop up with your brother because you love your brother to death. So uh, I know that because, you know, we've had numerous conversations. But how do you deal with that pressure with the things that pop up in the media with your brother and stuff? Like, Look. How are you there to support your family during those times? Listen, bro, I'm going to be honest. You know, I don't sugarcoat things. I've burned a lot of bridges in my past mm. due to my addiction, going to jail, you know, letting my family down. But I am coming on the right path. You know, I'm still learning. Yeah. It's all you can do. Exactly. But, you know, especially because of the high-profile person my brother is, you know, my actions can jeopardise his life, can jeopardise my mm. mum's. So you got to really think about that type of stuff, you know. It's a I'm, ripple again. It's a ripple effect, what we are talking about earlier, mm. you know. Like I could go do something tomorrow. It's in the papers or news de- degrading my brother because he's my brother or I'm his brother, mm. you know. My brother's a very, like, for people that don't know my brother, he's been through hell. His name's been tarnished. But you know what? He stayed humble from the from the get-go. He knew he was innocent. And the people that knew him and loved him knew he would never do such a thing, you know. It's like, how do I say it? Justice prevailed. That's the word I wanted to use. Oh yeah, you know. If you don't, if you don't get it in the spotlight, you get it karmatically. Correctly, you know. I'm a big, you know. My brother's moving on with his life, playing, you know, playing good footy. Mm. But then again, you know, everyone who knows my brother, you know, he's a gentleman. Does a lot for charities. Does a lot. He's done a lot for me, bro. Growing up, you know, helped me out so much. You know, I'll never be able to repay him for what he's done for me. You know, he's put my mum in a house, you know, like I said, we, you know, paycheck to paycheck growing up. He built her a house, so she, he set her up. But, you know, he's just a gentleman, bro. But, um, you know, I guess when you're in that industry, bro, you're always going to be in the spotlight, aren't you? It comes with the territory. Yeah, but it does play a big part of my mental health, you know. It's like, you know, more for him, you know. It's not for me, you know. I don't have fucking paparazzi following me around and that, but... You will after this podcast, you know uh, what I mean? Maybe. Hey, you know what I mean, I'm like, <laughs> it's all about, baby. But you know what I mean, bro. Yeah, I get it. I feel sorry more for him, you know. But he's all right. He's a strong man and, you know, that woman tried to bring him down, but he's still standing, brother. But like I said to you in the car, it just... It, like I said to you in the car, you know, everything prevails. Correct. You know, like, no, like, like you just said, everything prevails. But like I said to you in the car, I think it was a blessing, you know, for him because it shows his true character. You're right. Do you know what I mean? Like I think everyone in this room have, has tried to have a woman try to bring him down, especially of late. Actually, I feel like me and your brother should be twins. <laughs> I mean, I had, um, I had an incident where a woman tried bringing me down. We're not going to name names on this podcast. But... Justice always prevails. It does, bro. You know, and you can only handle it like a gentleman. When you handle it like a gentleman, the universe has a weird way of rewarding you. It does. You know, I am. I handed my life over to God. You mm. know, I put my life in God's hands. You know, that's how I live every day. I live like that. God willing. God willing. You know, whatever God puts in front of me. You know, I've, I'm big on my faith. You know, I lost it a lot through to addiction, crime, going to jail. I lost a lot of faith, but, you know, I'm back in it now. But, yeah, you know, my brother did go through the hard times. You know, it was very, very hard to see as a brother, him go through that. But like you said, 
the truth always comes out, bro, you know. I'm more than happy to get him on if he wants to talk about his side of the truth. <laughs> you can ask him, bro. Truth be told, mate. I'll give you, I'll give you his number. You I can don't, give I don't do bus. big payouts like a current affair or anything. Uh, he'll, probably want a, he'll probably want half a million, I think. Half a mil? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him half a mil. How about M-E-A-L, not M-I-L. Uh, now, don't inbox the other one. She'll probably come on here for free, bro. Nah, bro. I've I've decided I, I, I'm staying away from I'm staying away from women who just want drama. It's not my yeah. thing, man. It's not my fault. It's not what this podcast is about. We're about positivity on here. That's it. Now it is Mental Health Week, so I'm gonna ask you, what would you recommend for people who are going through it? Who, you know, let's do two scenarios. Let's yep. do a scenario because you know we've got to cater, you know, we a way for everyone. First scenario is what would be your couple of tips that you would give people who are going through mental health who don't want to speak to someone? Because you're going to have those ones. Listen, a big thing for me, I see it in my, especially where I live in the area, Mm. blokes, you know, our age, younger, older, you need to fuck the ego off. You need to let go of it because you know what? The ones that are going to be in the corner of your family, you know, you, you got to get rid of the ego. You got to admit that you need help. You got a few mental health issues. If you got addiction issues, just be honest about it. You mm. know, it's not going to hurt. You know, do you, would you rather keep causing yourself pain, causing your loved ones pain, or fix it? Yeah, it's just toxic, bro. See, my 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 advice would be to people like start journaling. Yeah, meditation. Yeah, yeah meditation. Look at look up look up ways to deal with look at Google it like we like you you put out the biggest devil but it's also our biggest asset it's depending on how we use it you know um, it, it doesn't make like a big thing in today's society it doesn't make you weak to speak nah, out bro no way I and love that movement there's not weak to speak movement yeah you are personally from me I hope no one gets offended you are weak if you don't speak up. Mm. Plain and simple, you know, I know it's hard. There's a lot of people struggling. But I was, I wanted to end it. That's how bad it was. But I spoke up to the, to my loved ones. They got me through it. You know, I had a very close soulmate. You know, she always be in my heart. She got me through it as well, bro. You know, you just got to, how do I say it, trust your loved ones. And, you know, things will be all right. But you do need to get help. You need to, you know... Your parents aren't professionals, your mates aren't professionals, your partners, your wives, they're not professionals. You know, there's help out there. You know, suicide is the last resort. You need to know this. It's not a resort. Take it, take it away. Just, yeah. It's not. But boy, yeah, 100%. I'm just saying, bro, it does cross your mind. If you're in a bad, yeah, bad space, sure. it does. You know, there's rehabs, private clinics that will help people with mental health. You go stay there. There's groups. There's, there's also a lot of free resources as well. There online. is. Online, I think Beyond Blue. Yeah. There's there's a few that you can like look up as well. Man. Listen, no one's gonna no one's gonna die. No if you think if you're watching this and you're thinking about killing yourself, don't do it. Reach out. Message me, message Drew. My phone's on me twenty four seven. My Instagram's on me. Message the truth be told page. I'll look at that too. Don't do it. You have, there is always a reason to live, whether it's to serve, to help you or to serve everyone others. Has, everyone has a purpose in life, bro, mm-hmm. you know. It, you got people that love you, you know, you got a future ahead of you. I know your head's like, it's hard for people that don't have depression. Like it was hard for my, say, my brother or my dad to understand my yeah. sort of, because they've never been through it. They've been through hard times. But that chemical imbalance, yeah. like they never... The darkness, the, the dullness. Darkness, you know what I mean? But The lack of motivation. Correct. You know, I was at one stage, bro, I was sleeping six, 16 to 18 hours a day. Fuck. Like it was bad, bro. That's all right. Look at me now, you know. You know what I mean? Robert Downey Jr. had a very bad uh, drug addiction. Correct. You know, the, the guy in Iron Man. Yep. He had a very, very shocking bad drug addiction. And then he bounced back. Look at him now. Look at him now. 100%. No, the comeback story is always the best one. And I another love thing. A comeback story. Another thing as well, you know, always check up on your loved ones. Mm. You know, the two biggest words that I know it sounds a bit funny that, you know, you sort of give your alarm bells that someone's not right. 
how's things going? I'm okay. It's number one. And never, number two, when someone's dealing with something, say, get over it, you'll be right. You never say that to someone. That's my biggest issue. I say that. It's not good, bro. I say that. Because my, yeah, I know. Because I've been through it in life. So my thing is, is like, you know, you just got to keep marching. So I think, yeah, I could, I'll, I'll learn to articulate better. No, nah, that's, it's, you know, you, I'll tell you a few stories that I've been through, bro. Obviously, off the podcast. But, no, I was um, trying to say, tell us now. We'll <laughs> <laughs> tell us now. But you we'll guess talk about dinner. Sounds good. But, but yeah. um, fuck, man. That was, yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad that you got to come on here and, you know, tell your side of it. Not even your side, like, you know. I know that at least one person will watch this and either put a knife away or, you know, take the next steps to getting their mental health right. And that's that's the most important thing. It's not, you know, life's worth living. No no men have to, you know, let's let's try. I'm going to advocate for it. Let's try to cut down men, uh, men's suicide because, you know, there's always a way out. There's, all, there's always a better option to take, you know. So I'm going to leave it on there. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for fucking, you know, being vulnerable, doing your thing, telling your thing, man. I'm, I'm sure someone's going to watch this and be like, fuck, fucking nice, you know? Yeah, bro, like like I said, it was very hard, you know, for me to come on here and, you know, talk about my life and what I've been through. But it's a big weight off my shoulders and, you know, if I can help, like you said, one person, mm. if they're struggling, I'm a happy man, AJ. But, yeah, um, where from now? What's next for you? What's next for you, Drew? You know, I've got I've got a few dreams. You know, I'm I'm starting up a construction little company for myself and stuff like that. But I really want to. I'm good with people. Um, I really want to get into something like you know, big with mental health. Mm. You know, go down that path or you know, help young offenders coming out of jail and stuff like that. I don't know what type of field I want in, but I want to sort of give back. You know, because I've done a lot of bad things in my life, and I want to give back. So, well, if you, know, you ever need help with it, I'm always here. I always give my time. Legend. Thanks, brother. Shout out. My man.